Welcome to Muse. My name is Mark Baer. I'm the director of the Museum of Monterey. We are shooting in the Museum of Monterey. Everything you see behind you, those raw wood displays that roll on wheels, that nice clean line, all the displays upstairs, all that design is designed by my good friend Tom Hood. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. It's fun to be here. Um, so we have been together for four years coming up since the reopening of the Museum of Monterey, the rebranding. Um, it's been an amazing journey and we are just, it takes almost this long to kind of explain what we're doing and now we're using this show to uh, a little bit articulate uh, what our mission is and what we've been trying to do. That's, that's a good point. It, it's, either, it's almost been easier to sort of do it and put it on than to sort of put it in writing where different organizations and people can sort of understand because when we tried to explain it, what, about three and a half years ago, they, got, they went, huh? what? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, you're going to be changing things constantly? And yeah. Yeah, that was, it's going to it was a tough sell. You guys are storytellers. What does that mean? Uh, yeah. you're, so, and again, we are storytellers. We tell the stories of the uh, greater Monterey area. We see history as a living thing uh, where the past informs the present and the present helps build the future. Mm -hmm. um, we are local global. Mm -hmm. We are nimble. We are opportunistic. Um, We're certainly frugal, <laughs> aren't we? Though, yeah. so let's 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 say how little we've done with so much, or so much we've done with so little. Well, what I was thinking about was uh, uh, a couple of things. One is the number of people that we got involved uh, about three and a half years ago that were painting walls, changing light bulbs. I mean, doing the physical stuff, and those those selected professionals that we brought in to help get the doors open on time. You know, like people like Phil Wellman, who ran a great meeting, right. who understands branding from his, his long-standing work with the jazz festival. And, and then other creative people that just wanted to be a part of something that they saw could be, uh, in a sense, our own redefining of what a small regional or local museum could be. Lisa Casino. Yeah. Exactly, Lisa Casino, Chris Iatesta, People like that that wanted to be a part of something that was challenging, had to be quick, had to be good, and, and really had to be very inexpensive, responsive to an audience that was only identified verbally, which was, well, we want to attract more kids. We want to attract members of the community that had only come to this building maybe once when it was the Maritime Museum. And why didn't they ever come back? You know, And we wanted to find out why. So if some of the things that we came up with is that a museum must serve many constituencies. It must work on many levels. Uh, it has to work for kids. It has to work for a diverse community. It has to uh, work for a tourist. It also has to serve an important community function. Um, part of what we've been trying to do with the idea of developing a center of excellence is to bring scientists together with artists, with uh, educators, with historians to tell our story to the world. If we tell our story to the world and show what an amazing, vibrant community are, we are, then we are deserving of being funded. In other words, there's no, you, you, you have to have something to say and you really have to do it well to be deserving of funding if you want to keep your doors open if you're a, a, a nonprofit cultural institution these days and that was all part of our thinking going in well it that's absolutely true and and with with the greatest amount of respect to the, you know museums all over the country all over the world I I've, I've been active with this because I love museums but my childhood and in the my childhood history with museums and the historical paradigm, and I'll give one example, like the, the v and Museum in London. The idea there was to make objects that were only visible or enjoyed by royalty accessible to the everyman, right? Every man on the street. All they said was, well, now the public can sort of see how the other half lives, right? Versailles is another perfect example of that. 
And that really carried on in the, in the tradition in the United States with like the Field Museum, Natural History Museum in Chicago. The aquarium is, we're gonna put all this amazing stuff on display, everyone come in and see it, which is what every fourth grader did, including here. What we've been talking about is a museum that is evolving on a regular basis, that the community's influence has an impact on exactly what goes in the museum as opposed to, I wanna say exclusively a board or an executive director saying, we're gonna show the so-and-so objects. The objects are just the starting point of a social space where people come in and can look at things and can talk about what's on display, but also can bring ideas to the museum that are related to our storytelling as a regional museum. It's a much more dynamic, fluid, unpredictable way that really kind of responds to really our attention span as, as, as Americans today. We don't have that four hour window anymore to browse the long, dark, hallowed halls. It's and again, different. by the community, for the community, and we talk about our members, our members being as important. So again, if we have an exhibition that changes once every eight months or so, that's a long months. time for us. Yeah, or six months. Yeah. Uh, and we've put on a lot of shows. I, I think we've put on over 30 shows in the last four years. Total events, exhibitions, which is a ridiculously aggressive oh, number. Oh, well, that that's numerous. So we, we've been active. Uh, but again, what we've concentrated on is the idea of what do you give members? Well, to come see a show, well, that's not enough. You have to have what people in our community are striving for is a social space. They want to meet each other. There's interesting people here, and they want, if, if you view a museum as a sacred, secular space, people like to come here because they feel good here, important things happen here, and they want to meet uh, like-minded people who are active in the community. So by setting that dynamism in play, uh, I, I think we've served uh, our community well. I, I tell people it's, it's, what we do is like a piece of art a good piece of art, you can't quite explain what it is. You, you see it and you feel the vibe and it's telling you something. It's on the tip of your tongue, but you can't quite articulate it. And that's what I feel we've done here. And I think that's a good thing. But on the other hand, it's not an obvious thing. And not having an obvious thing um, is more difficult to explain. And, and that's uh, caused us some, uh, some difficulty. Well, there's, and there, there have been people that have come in the museum that uh, friends like out in Valley, that they said, I've never been in this building. This is gorgeous, right? The perception of this being kind of this object sitting on the plaza with the maritime collection, it drew in tens of thousands of people that only came in and saw a very limited window what the Monterey regional history really is. And to me, the history is, is what Tim Thomas was talking about 10 minutes ago that happened 100 years ago, but it's also what Tim Thomas is doing today to further the story. And part of it that, that, that to me goes with that is that the setting when people come in and see the museum, that it is friendly, it's bright, it's not intimidating, it's essentially informal. And that hence what kind of led us to this concept of Partitions that are unpainted are mobile, so we can move things around, that we can change them for large events. And I was thinking about really three different exhibitions. Flows de Bay, the partitions also kind of were an abstraction of what we we're conveying. The gyres in the Pacific Ocean floating. In that case, the panels floated off the floor with the artwork on it. So it had this sort of otherworldly quality. Beautiful Whale, you've got a 40 foot long mammal in the middle of the room. So the whole exhibition was about one object, a big cube in the middle of the room with this 40 foot whale on one side. The third one is CAA, which is about a collaborative, a collective. And that design was set up so that you get the feeling that this is a gathering, an association of artists. At the same time, we can move those partitions out of the way in literally five minutes and have a party for 200 in the space. And, and All again, the same system. And again, the 21st century, the 21st century museum, again, has to be so flexible. We, we've always thought of this as a, as a circus where one act, you know, the act in the morning has to, the walls have to change and the act in the evening has to come on. Or like the low budget Ed Sullivan shows without the plate spinners and the ventriloquists. Yeah. And if we could only get the plate spinners in here, <laughs> I'd love that. We could uh, work that out on the weekends uh, up on the bridge. So, so we've had a, 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 a combination of complexity, uh, 
of what, how we've done things here and simplicity. Again, we say we're storytellers. We have, um, most often here, we have a live storyteller on hand to walk you around and use the objects as uh, just starting points to tell a story. I mean, we're very, this is the day of storytelling and we're very literal about telling the stories. We use a lot of loops, uh, a lot of uh, video. Um, again, we, we're again, talking about putting television out here, so what happens here, we can reach out into the community and have a, uh, a greater um, range of uh, people seeing what we do. Well, and it's also with the expectation that somebody that comes to the museum more than once, uh, they may only like one thing, right? Right. Uh, and I've said to innumerable people that have come through, they go, well, you know, we're really hoping to see more of this. And my response is, come back next month or come back in 60 days. It's going to change again. And they kind of look at me, what do you mean it's going to change? I said, it's all mobile. It has to be that way to not only sort of respond to people's attention span, but to the multiple of stories in a way that you want to come back to the same building to see what's next, that it's not always the same collection in the same place. And that's a way that you can continually build but challenge an audience and say, if you're not interested this month, come back, We're going to, you're going to see something different. That requires us to be, as you say, to be nimble. So I guess the word that, uh, to describe what we've done is we've been creative-centric. We have had uh, artists uh, front, front and center rather than, um, which, you know, again, that has its own issues as well, but we've, we've put our creative team really in, in charge of this, and that's part of uh, working on a budget, and, and again, the frugality and how we've learned to create with, with very little is a discipline that even if, if lots more funding came in, I'd want to stick to that because it, it causes us to uh, not have waste. It causes us to, to be creative. It causes us to say, how can we, what's the simplest way to tell a complicated story? I, I agree. Uh, obviously, everybody's, everybody's got to work within a budget, and we have, you know, beat ourselves senseless trying to say, well, this is really going to take, uh, an example, this is really going to take 20000 but we've got to do it for three. So, and we've got to do it in a change-up between exhibitions. Uh, we don't have a month to set up. We've got 10 days. Well, wait a minute. No, we've only got eight days because we're renting the building the night, night before the official opening. And it really comes down to, what are the pieces you've got? What volunteers can you harness? And, you know, when we did the CAO show, uh, I had four different crews going, knowing that the volunteers kind of get burned out after about three days, and we burned through about ten people, and we got the whole thing done in seven days, right? If we had gone in the old method, quite honestly, it would have been a month. It would have cost four times as much. It really wouldn't look a whole lot different, but would it really be any better? And, you know, Having a very tight budget, as just same with in my architectural practice, having a budget is a great constraint. Otherwise, you tend to kind of go all over the place and try and solve too many problems. And, you know, in this particular case, doing things here, this partition system of the lighting and the paint colors, most of the improvements in the building I see are like a 64th of an inch thick. It's a coat of paint, right? And once you get the artwork up and it's lit properly, after it's up, for rentals it becomes wallpaper. But it's got to be a really interesting wallpaper and a great space for people to say, this is place is so cool at night, we've got to come back for a party, or let's rent this space. And as a result, we've had this huge surge in rentals of the facility because most people have never been in here before except, you know, with a fourth grade class. And it's, it's pretty glamorous here at night, looking it's pretty, out, it's out at the nice. bay with a cocktail in hand. <laughs> and again, you can't overestimate the glamour aspect and need for uh, for people to donate, for uh, people to think about how, what you do. Uh, it's yeah. important if you want people to come for a social space, it's got to be cool. It's got to be cool. And the people that I've found, uh, and I've been to, what, about 18 openings in the last two years here, uh, the people that really get excited about it is the fact that when they come in, it's a little bit unpredictable as opposed to what their expectation of a museum. And some even said, don't even call it a museum because that conjures up this paradigm of you know, dark halls and security guards. It's just different here and it changes all the time. The, our biggest supporters, both in, you know, 
emotionally and financially are the ones that think it's important for our peninsula to have a museum that is nimble, flexible, changing, reflective of a lot of different interests and is not, in a sense, intimidating. It's not a private club. It's something they can come by and bring their kids, bring their families, and bring them back later and they'll see something different. That's a very tough show to put on. You're essentially, you're rewriting it every month. So Mama's Now, Mama's Wow, and Tom Hood, you put the wow. <laughs> <laughs> Group effort. <laughs> Great being here. Uh, you've been watching Muse. This is Mark Baer. Tune in later. We'll be back.